Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. I got a combination CCNP switch and CCNA video boot camp here for you today on the VLAN trunking protocol, VTP. Now, this is one of the first things you learn in switching, especially when you're working on VLANs in your CCNA. And if you're working on the CCNP switch, you may think you've got everything down about VTP. It is one of the simplest commands or simplest protocols on the switching exam, certainly. Uh, but there's a little gotcha here that I definitely think you'll benefit from as well as a good refresher here. So let's go ahead and jump into the live equipment. And we are on switch one. Let me move that over just a tad. There we go. And as you can see on switch one here, I just ran show VLAN brief just to see what we already had up and running. And I've got nine ports in our default VLAN of VLAN 1, and we've got VLAN 14 with no ports in it. Now, to see what our VTP status is, and there's a hint, we run show VTP status. This is a great command when you first walk into a client site and you don't know the lay of the land yet as far as the switches go just to see what the domain names are, how many VLANs are in each one, that kind of thing. What we're going to really concentrate on here today are these two features. The operating mode, server, client, transparent. We know those are the choices. We'll change one in just a moment. We're really going to concentrate on server versus client today. Now with the, the domain name, by default, as you would expect, a Cisco switch is not going to be in a VTP domain by itself. So I set that to CCNP. If this did not yet belong to a domain, there would just be nothing there. It wouldn't say null or nada or anything like that at all. So be careful with that because when you're scanning down a list of different values, it's really easy to skip over a blank line. And that could definitely be the whole problem if you're having a VTP issue. Now let's go ahead and change the mode here. And we know the choices are client, server, and transparent. Now, the classic definition, it's the one I use in my books, is that with server, you can create, delete, modify. In server, uh, excuse me, in server, you can create, delete, modify. In client, you cannot create, delete, modify. But the word modify seems to cover a lot of ground, and we want to make sure of exactly what a switch can and can't do in client mode. So that's why we're going to set that one in client mode. You get a simple little co uh, confirm message, setting device to VTP client mode, and you're ready to go. Now, let's go ahead and review those VLANs. Now, I've got a VLAN 14 there I want to work with. Let's say that I decide to change the name of that to accounting. Do you think that counts as being modified? What do you think? Let's even try to go in config mode here. And you're not going to be able to do it. If you even try to go into VLAN config mode, you're going to be told that it's not allowed when the device is in client mode. Same thing goes if I actually try to delete the VLAN, you're going to get the exact same message. So, so far, you know, we're seeing the theory holds up. Now, what if I try to put a port into VLAN 14 at this point? What do you think? If I try, let's bring the live equipment back up at 09. If I try to put that port into VLAN 14 on a client, am I going to be able to do it? We'll make it an access port out of habit. Switch access VLAN 14. Well, it didn't yell at me, so I guess that's a good sign. But let's make absolutely sure here. And you can see there it is. Now, I've seen more than one person over the years say, well, no, you, you can't put a port into a VLAN on a client. Well, yeah, you have to really be able to. Otherwise, you'd really just be immobilizing that particular switch when you made it a client, right? So that does not count as modification. You can't create it. You can't delete it. You can't rename it. But you can put a port into it. Now, here's the odd part. If you had a VLAN that did not yet exist on this switch, what could you do? What you would have to do in that case, let's say that I wanted to put port 5 into VLAN 5. Well, I can't create VLAN 5 on this device. It's a client. And I can't do the old, you know, switch access VLAN 5 and then have the switch created because it's going to tell me that it can't do that or it's just not going to work. So what I actually have to do in that case is go over to switch 2, create the VLAN there, and I'll just verify it here first. 
And there's VLAN 5. It should be advertised over here to the switch. If it's not, we'll be doing some troubleshooting now. There it is. And now, if I wanted to do this, I could. So that's just one of those little classic gotchas. If you're on a client and you want to put a port into a VLAN that already exists, you can do that. But if you try to put a port into a VLAN that does not yet exist, by definition, you can't create it on a client. you got to go to one of the servers and create it there. Just one of those little things we've got to watch out for during our studies. I want to thank you for watching today's 5-Minute Video Boot Camp. Come on out, join me on Twitter, YouTube, our blog, and on Facebook. And this May on Amazon.com in May 2012, free CCNA and CCNP eBooks for your Kindle, all the apps, and all the other eBook readers as well. Thanks again for watching. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE12933.